Shalom. First off, I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High God, your name Yahweh, in the name of Yahweh Shah, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, in the name of the Holy Spirit, which the Holy Spirit is with comforts and guidance, especially during these perilous times to come. I also want to give a double honor to our apostles and elders, a great millstone who teach and rule well with truth and sincerity, and peace and salutation to the elect. Today's lesson is going to be something along the lines of we're not your average everyday civilians because technically we're not civilians especially in this world because majority of these people in this world don't like us and like the scripture saying um and um john the 17th chapter that our lord yahweh Shah said if you were of the world the world would love its own so, but we're not of this world because we speak the words we speak the words of the creator of the universe, which is Yahweh Shem Shah. And like the scriptures say, they hate of him that rebuke within the gate. But like I said, for the most part, technically, we're not civilians of this world because we're not of this world. And when I say this world, I'm specifically talking about the kingdom that we're in right now, which is a polluted kingdom, which is ran by the so-called white man, who forefathers Esau Edom, the elites, the ones that sent, that's controlling the money, etc. They're the modern day Pharaoh. So as of right now, the men of the Lord that the Lord put the spirit on to do so, ultimately we're chatting down the downfall of this kingdom. Because we understand, like I said, it's polluted and it's pushes it pushes doing things that's contrary to what's pleasing in the sight of our Lord Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah. So the Lord has left a remnant of teachers according to his heart, like it says in um Jeremiah the three third child and starting at the fifteenth verse, that he set up passes according to his heart that would teach his people knowledge. But we understand majority of our people, like I said, the majority of these people in this world, and that includes two thirds of our people that's gonna be destroyed. They don't like the things we speak. So ultimately we're basically soldiers behind enemy lines, doing the work of the Lord until our Lord Yahweh Shah returns to deliver us when the Lord the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, says it's time for him to do so. So, first scripture I'm going to grab is 2 Timothy chapter 2, and I'm going to start at verse 3. It reads, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahweh, Shah HaMashiach. So, we got to endure hardness as a good soldier. That means go through the trials and tribulations that we have to go through because, like it says, as gold is tried in the fire, so it is acceptable men. So, we got to go through the the things of being persecuted for righteousness sakes. We got to go through our loved ones possibly turning uh, turning on us or turning against us for the things that we speak. But like the scriptures say, we must strive for the truth until death and the Lord shall fight for us. So whether we end up, like I said, being persecuted, you know, cast into prison, whether we lose our jobs because we don't want to conform, conform to a way that's not pleasing in the sight of the Lord, we're going to do that because we understand that the Lord is going to give us a greater reward if we endure to the end. And that's salvation, which we understand salvation is only for the elect of the nation of Israel, the Lord's chosen people, which the Israelites are the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and the Israelite foreigners that look like heathen but are not heathen because their father's seed line traces back to one of the 12 progenitors of the 12 tribes of Israel. But, like it says, I'm going to start over. It said, Thou therefore endure harness as a good soldier. And you know, when you're a soldier, you're out there on the battlefield. You don't have time to be thinking about, you know, civilian, a civilian lifestyle. Because ultimately, you're out there worried about whether you're going to make it off that battlefield or not. Because some people aren't going to make it. And we know majority of these people, like I said, especially amongst Israel, 
they're not even putting up a fight. So they definitely gonna be caught like a thief in the night. The enemy is gonna catch them. And like, like I said, when the enemy should come in like a flood, the enemy is gonna overtake them because they're not paying attention. They're not listening to the prophets that the Lord has set up, specifically for my elders and apostles, the great millstone on down to the men that teach the same doctrine. But I'm going to continue on. It reads, No man that wharf entangle himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. And like I said, we're not your average everyday civilians because we don't, we're not entangling ourselves with the affairs of this life. Of course, we do what we need to do as far as and while the time is been, while we're able to continue to do it, you know, but we must rehearse the righteous acts to the best of our abilities, like it's written in Judges 5 and 11. So yeah, as of right now, while we still can, we still, you know, work if possible, pay our bills, you know, follow the, the certain laws in this kingdom, you know, stopping at stop signs, you know, doing what we have to do, using wisdom while maneuvering behind enemy lines. And if you read this um, verse in another, um, they got another um, version. It'll say something like, no man at war entangle him himself, entangle himself with the affairs of civilian life that he may please him who have chosen enlisted him to be a soldier. And we understand that Yahweh Bashim al Shah has enlisted us to be a soldier. So we're going to do what we got to do to do what's pleasing in the sight of the Lord. Because we want to be like, considered a faithful a faithful servant to Yahweh Shem Yahushai and receive that incorruptible crown. I'm going to go from there to second address. Chapter 16 and verse 40. Because we must keep in mind that this is not the end all be all. America, spiritually, Egypt, Sodom, Babylon, the great diversion order of Babylon is polluted. And we understand that we got to get up out of here, but we got to just, we got to go through the, the, the prophecies. We got to go through all the prophecies written in the scriptures. Because that's the will of Yahweh Bashim Shah. But Yahweh Bashim Shah has gave us the blueprint to ultimately maneuver through the time being in this kingdom. Second Edris chapter 16 and verse 40 it reads, O oh, my people, hear my word, make you ready to the battle, and in those evils be even as pilgrims upon the earth. He that selleth, let him be as be as he that fleeth away, and he that bath as one that will lose. He that occupied merchandise as that he he that have no profit by it, and he that buildeth as he that shall not dwell there. He that soweth as, soweth as if he should not reap. So also he that planteth of the vineyard as that that as he that shall not gather the grapes. They that marry as they that shall get no children, and they that marry not as the widowers. So that's telling us that we shouldn't be putting out all in this kingdom. It said be as pilgrims upon the earth. And pilgrims don't just sit in one spot. So you shouldn't have that false American dream thought in your mind. You know, the big house with the white picket fence and the dog. Because this is not our rest. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 14 it reads for we have no continuing city but we seek one to come by him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to Yahweh Shemuel Shah continually that is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name so we understand that we have no continuing city and we seek one to come and that's the kingdom of heaven because we're not doing we're not out there on the highways and byways and doing these in, uh, internet epistles just 
speaking vain words. We're doing that, doing this because we're trying to usher in the kingdom of heaven. The men of the Lord, we have a kingdom mindset. We understand that, like the scriptures say in Proverbs 29, and I believe the second verse, that when the wicked are in authority, the people mourn. And when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, roughly paraphrasing. So we understand when our kingdom is established, we understand that even the heathen are going to be living better. Even though they're going to be under subjection to us, but they're going to be living better because we understand that the basis of men, like I said, so the so-called white man, Esau, Edom, is in rulership and they're destroying the earth. So even the earth is going to be, the plants, the trees, the, the, the wildlife are going to be rejoicing when the sons of God is, the sons of God is in rulership. Yasha Allah, he prince of power, the Israelites. You know, leading with our Lord Yahweh Shai. Everything is going to be back in order. We're not going to have to work, you know. We're not going to be stressed out. Our women are going to be in order. We're going to be able to enjoy our children. We're not going to have to worry about war anymore. We're not going to have to worry about wickedness anymore. And that's how you know that the the elect is a small remnant because the majority of the people in this world, they want this kingdom to continue on because ultimately the Lord doesn't want them to see the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But we see the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven and that makes us want it even more. That makes us arise in the pot out of this, this, um, this kingdom mentally. Matter of fact, Micah 2 verse 10 it reads arise ye and depart for this is not your rest so we gotta depart out of this kingdom spirit, mentally spiritually and mentally cause we understand the biggest deliverance you know will be out of America but the nation of Israel, we've been scattered around the four corners of the earth. But we know that we're supposed to do our best to do this work wherever we are. Because the Lord ultimately can deliver you from wherever you are. The scriptures doesn't say hop on a plane to fly to another country or a boat to go to another country. The, the scriptures is saying arise in the pot spiritually and mentally. That's why the scriptures say, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, because any man that love the world, the love of the Father is not in it, in them. Of course, we have our loved ones that we take care of and care about, if possible, but if they're doing things that's hindering us from doing this work, then we ultimately have to cut them off. We can't love them over Yahweh Bashem Yahweh because like the scriptures say, if you love anything over Yahweh Bashem Yahweh you're not worthy of the kingdom of heaven. But I'm going to continue on to read because it is polluted. It should destroy you even with a sore destruction. Like it says in um, Matthew the 24th chapter in the 22nd verse that the Lord said if he didn't, didn't shorten days, it would be no flesh to be saved. Because we understand that, it's, like it says in Romans 6 chapter and I believe the 23rd verse, that the wages of sin is death. Like I said, this kingdom promotes death. So... If we continue to live in this wicked society, ultimately it's going to be no flesh to be saved because ultimately these devils are going to destroy their self along with everybody in the world. <laughs> so we got to get out of here. Like I said, we're not your average everyday civilians. That we preach this truth because we love Yahweh Shem Yahushai. Yahweh Shai is who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. And if you love Yahweh, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His Son, then you will believe on this truth. But majority of the people, like the scriptures say, Romans the 10th chapter, that they had the, the, the zeal of the Most High, but not according to knowledge. And ultimately, fools hate knowledge. These people act as if they love the Lord, but they technically don't because they're not 
doing what the scriptures tell them to do. Because the scriptures are the words of the Lord, the Old and the New Testament. The scriptures say, eat the whole road. You can't pick and choose what you, what you, um, what you want, and just throw the rest away. Cause, like some camps, that's not teaching the truth, talking about that some of the books are not valid. Some of the books that Apostle Paul wrote are not valid. Some camps are teaching that. You can call the the Lord whatever you want to call him. No respect. That's like if your name is John and I'm calling you Jack. That's no respect. But I'm going to go from there to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. And verse 29 it reads, But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that had wives be as though they had none. And they that weep as though they wept not, and they that rejoice as though they had rejoiced not, and they that buy as though they possess not, and they that use this world as not abusing it for the fashion of this world passive away. Because we don't understand that, like it says, that they that have wives as though they had none, because we ultimately understand that when you're in this truth, your first love is this truth. So you're supposed to be more so focused on these scriptures and doing the work of the Lord. Praying that the Lord keep the Holy Spirit on you and don't take it away because if the Lord takes this Holy Spirit away from you, ultimately you're going to be more than likely to destroy along with your loved ones. It's possible that you may save, you know, your wives and your children through your work, through your works. You may, they may be saved if that's in the will of your high shot. But dropping this truth and not Doing the work of the Lord won't do you no good. And it said that the, um, on the 31st verse, and they that use this word is not abusing it, for the fact that this world passes away. Because, like I stated earlier, that of course we got to do what we got to do to get our daily bread. Ultimately, that comes from Yahweh Hashem Yahshah. But that's, for the most part, what we should be ultimately praying for. Not these. Not praying to be rich, prosperous in this kingdom, like how they teach in, you know, the church, the Christian church. We supposed to be praying that we receive the things that we need to get through the day. Like it says in um, Matthew, the sixth chapter, I believe at the 34th fourth verse, that sufficient is to the day is the evil day of roughly paraphrasing. Every day is evil as it is. So you, you ultimately should be praying to get through the day. And like I said, to keep that the Lord keep the Holy Spirit on you because it's been people that's been in this truth for decades and lost the Holy Spirit and are teaching all manner of wickedness. And that's why I pray that the Lord don't do that to, to me and of course the men that I've met in this truth. But I understand that if it's in the will of the Lord, he's going to do what he has to do. Because the Lord knows who a person's heart like they love to say Amos chapter 5 and verse 10 it reads they hate him that rebuketh in the gate and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly so like I said we're not your average everyday citizens we're soldiers for your high boss shim y'all shot behind enemy lines and like I said most of these people in this world they hate us because we rebuke within the gate. We're telling our people that they got to get right. And when we're telling our people that they got to get right, ultimately we're shining the light. That light is Yahweh Shai. And most people that's in darkness, they don't want that light to shine upon them. They don't want their, you know, their, their sins to be, to be shown, etc. But we understand that, of course, all of us have fell short of the glory. We all have sinned, but it's time to repent. Like it says in Acts 17 and 30, that the Lord said at the time of our ignorance, he, weakened, he winked at it, basically. But now it's time for us all to come to repentance. But we understand, like I said, only the one third is going to actually do that. The elect of the nation of Israel. Two thirds of our people are going to have to be destroyed along with these heathen. 
the two thirds of our people are going to be reborn back in the kingdom through the loins of an individual that's delivered. And the heating that's preserved for, for after the destruction to come from the nuclear, the, you know, the, the missiles, World War Three, are going to be the first fruits going into slavery. But we got to make wait for these prophecies to come to pass. Like we know, Jacob's trouble. Um, World, World War Three, the mark of the beast, written in Revelation 13 and 16. These devils trying to make it mandatory, saying that you can't buy or sell unless you have it. The the RFID microchip that the Lord clearly gave us the blueprint and said, "Do not take it. If you take it, you're going to be destroyed." But that's why we pray that Yahweh Shem Yahshai keep the spirit on us not to take it, even if it has to be into death. But we understand that that's the even we understand that that's the condition of the battle that some people's lot to, to have to deal with. But we understand that the Lord can put the spirit on you to be able to go through any certain situation that He puts you through. Like it says in First Corinthians, I believe the tenth chapter, starting the thirteenth verse, that the Lord. Is it going to put on you more than you can bear, roughly paraphrasing? But that's all I got. Shalom.